For a hypertensive or diabetic follow-up, we can use our pre, present, and post technique as we'll see below, or using old carts, we'll note the onset or when were they diagnosed. To help characterize, we'll ask our patient if they're keeping a log of their blood pressure or blood glucose level readings, and if they're having any symptoms, such as a headache or polyuria. Treatments may be on, including their compliance and side effects, and for severity, we're going after any complications they may be feeling. So we'll do a thorough review of symptoms to see if they're having any erectile dysfunction, vision changes, or neuropathy. Or on the pre-column, we'd like to know when they were diagnosed, symptoms they were having at the time, such as a headache, vision changes, polyuria, or polydipsia, and their blood pressure or blood glucose levels at the time. On the present side, we'd like to know currently now what are their blood pressure or blood glucose levels, or if they're not keeping a log, we'll state that in our patient note to show that we asked. Their medications, including their dose, compliance, and side effects, and their diet and exercise routine. On the post side, we like to note their complications, erectile dysfunction, retinopathy, hypoglycemic episodes, lightheadedness or sweating, peripheral neuropathy, numbness, tingling, or skin changes, ulcer or hair loss. We can ask them if they've had any screening exams, ophthalmology, podiatry, and counsel them to keep measuring their blood pressure and blood glucose levels, encourage exercise, and limit their sodium and processed carbs. For all cases, let's order a CBC, serum electrolytes, urinalysis, BUN, and creatinine to rule out kidney disease, and a lipid panel, serum glucose, and A1C. In organic erectile dysfunction, we'll have a loss of the early morning erection, and we could see associated chest pain, claudication, and hair loss. Now, our patient will have a history of hypertension, diabetes, and smoking. And we'll add to our workup a genital exam, TSH T4, FSH LH, testosterone, and a Doppler ultrasound of the penis. In hypertensive or diabetic retinopathy, we'll see progressive visual loss, headache and hypertension, and numbness and tingling in diabetes. And our patient will have a history of hypertension, diabetes, or smoking. And we'll add a dilated fundus exam. In hypoglycemic episode, we'll see lightheadedness, sweating, palpitations, and our patient will have diabetes on insulin. And finally, in diabetic peripheral neuropathy, we'll see numbness and tingling with a history of diabetes and we'll add a nerve conduction study. We'll start our neuro exam with hand sanitizer and we want to ask our SP if we have permission to examine them. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to start with the hint exam and we're going to use it as a guide to help us out. So for the head, we could comment that it's normal cephalic, atraumatic, and then we can now transition to our fundoscope here. And we're going to use the same eye as the patient's eye. So we're going to use my right eye and his right eye. And so I'll ask him to keep looking straight ahead and we could verbalize that there's no fundoscopic lesions and he has no AV nicking or hemorrhages. For the cardio exam, a good way to do this is to degown the patient and just to help cover them up, you could ask them to please hold it in this position so that it can be protected and covered. First thing we want to do is vis visualize. So we'll make a comment that there's no cardiac visible lesions I'm going to check the back and do the same thing as well. And now we're going to go ahead and palpate. So we're going to use a Z motion to just palpate and see if there's any pain. Does that produce any pain? Do the same thing on the back as well. Okay, good. And uh, now that we didn't feel any pain, we'll go ahead and listen to the heart sound. The mnemonic we want to use is apartment M225A. That stands for the aortic. So we'll check that aortic first in the second intercostal space on the right. And then we're going to go to the pulmonic side. Tricuspid. And then we're going to go to the mitral. And if this was a female patient, a tip you could use to slip their breast up. Okay, we can make a comment that we heard a regular uh, audible S1, S2, no murmurs, rubs, or gallops. We'll switch it over to the bell and we'll use that to listen above the clavicle. And the instructions you want to give is, when you feel my stethoscope, please breathe in and breathe out. Okay, 
So now we can make a comment that we heard clear breath sounds, uh, no audible wheezing. We could just set the bed to 30 degrees for the uh, carotid exam. Ask them to go ahead and please lie down. Then you don't want to forget to extend the leg rest. Okay. Once we have them lying down, we can now cover up, cover them up again. And we'll start the carotid brewery exam. Um, if you could ask the patient to please look to your left. And we'll use, we're going to use now the bell of the stethoscope to first listen. Okay, you make a comment that there's no audible breweries, and while he's still on the side, you can now feel for the pulse, and you can comment that there's a two plus pulse, regular rate and rhythm. We'll do the same thing on the other side, so you can ask the patient to please turn, listen. Okay, you make a comment that there's no audible breweries, and then feel for the pulse again, that it's a two plus pulse, regular rate and rhythm. Finish up the cardio exam, we would just like to also take for the PMI. So to do this, the best uh, position to do this in is to have the patient to lean over on your left side, please. And just feel that it's not displaced at all and it should be in the fifth intercostal space. And it's also very important not to forget to assess for the PMI, to auscultate for the PMI on the patient's left side and under the gown. If they were wearing a gown, we would go under the gown and we would just listen real quick. After the carotid brewery exam, is to roll the gown up. And now do the same thing. We'll inspect first and we'll comment that there's no visible lesions. And ask him if uh, you ha do you have any pain at all? Okay. So we'll use the diaphragm of the stethoscope to, to first auscultate in four quadrants. make a comment that there's normal active bowel sounds. And then the next step is to percuss. So we can percuss again in those four quadrants. Okay, and since he indicated that he has no pain, we could start anywhere. And the first thing we'll do is we'll start superficial palpation. So we could do that with just one hand and do that very lightly. We'll try to go in three lower quadrants. So we'll do the three bottom quadrants and we'll ask him if he has any pain and you could also look to see if he winces at all. So you keep his, your eyes on his eyes. Okay, okay good. And now I'm going to transition to a deep. And for a deep, you could just do hand on hand. And you could do the same thing. Let me know if you have any pain. I'll do three quadrants. OK. If they had no pain, the next, the last step we'll do is we'll check for a patomegaly. And so a good uh, way to do this is place your hand under the, his liver span, and you can instruct the patient to please breathe in. And once they breathe in, as they breathe out, you'll move your hand to the lower edge of his rib cage. And as long as you don't feel the liver extending below that rib cage, you can make the comment that there was no hepatomegaly. For motor strength on the lower extremities, could you please kick out? OK, good. So that's five out of five. Now can you please kick in? Good, five out of five. Now we'll go into sensation. So please close your eyes and let me know if you feel this equally on both sides. Yes, I do. Okay, great. And now we're going to go into pinprick. So this is a pinprick. I'm going to start on your left side and please let me know if you feel this all the way down. Yes, I feel it. Okay. And now I'm going to go on to your right side. So please let me know if you feel this. Yes, I do, but not as much. Okay, so we have decreased the pinprick on the right side. For neuropathy, he may not uh, have good proprioception. So if we ask him if this is the up position and this is a down position, mm -hmm. where, where are we now? Are we up or down? I don't know. So he may say he doesn't know. And that, that would confirm that he has lost his proprioception for his patella as well. I want to ask him to relax and assess his patella reflex. OK, good. And now tap on his Achilles tendon. So we'd start right here. And we would, we would get a normal reflex. We could also test while we're down here a Babinski. So we could start on the bottom of the sole and go into the big toe. And note, if he had a positive Babinski, his toes would curl up. For the pulse, we're going to go behind the medial malleoli. And we'll feel for the pulse, two plus pulse. And then we could do the same thing on the left extremity and verbalize we have a two plus bilaterally.